Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I need to bring Matford Kerman home safely and then we'll see what else I would like to do based probably on our contracts and maybe the testing of a new rocket uh, but we'll see. But first uh, Matford should be my one and only goal here and we seem to have quite a lot of lithium hydroxide. I need to make sure that we don't carry so much next time. It's not a huge mass, but uh, every little bit counts. So yeah, we are overloaded with lithium hydroxide this time. I mean, I'm just making sure that we've got the CO2 scrubber on, okay? And yep, CO2 levels are good, electric charge levels are good. Got plenty of food, water, and oxygen for the return trip. And so that's fine. And uh, we've got 860 meters per second left in this stage, which was just our transfer stage. Uh, so uh, we still got uh, plenty of fuel in the next stage, which is locked right now. So the situation is good, but I, I'm still not too sure about the re-entry situation, right? Because the re-entry situation, when we brought back home the test version of the carrot, uh, well, that burned up. So I need to be concerned about that. But anyway, let me plot for the trip back home. I'm not going to do any additional science right now. I think I'll uh, save that for other trips. But, uh, yep, let me get the, the trans-Earth injection plotted, and then we will see what happens. Well, I don't need to fill around with this. I just need to make sure I hit the right number on the burn. But uh, it looks like this transfer stage could have handled the whole thing all on its own. You can see that this burn, I planned for 1,200 meters per second to get back. Looks like it's only going to take us 785 and we've got 860 left in this stage. So very interesting. So we'll have one last relight of this this stage and uh, we don't have any of the SRBs left, these little guys, but uh, we'll use RCS. I'm sure the RL-10 could manage another relight uh, in real life, I mean. So that's okay. We're not doing anything too unrealistic. Uh, well, 10 relights though. Uh, I mean, that that's the maximum for the RL-10, I believe. Uh, I think uh, we're on 6, 5 or 6, I've lost count. So I don't know how often that sort of thing's been done, but but in theory it should work. Now I've got all our solar panels here, but we've also got solar panels on the pod, so we're not going to be short of power on the way back, even if we ditch this stage. And we will ditch this stage after the transfer burn. But this turned out to be much more capable than I expected. We can plan some more, more substantial missions, perhaps. Okay, I think I need at least a minute for this. Looks like stage time is a minute and 51 seconds, so here we go. Uh, let me get the RCS thrust all going, pushing us forward, selling down the fuel. And after about a meter per second of that, I will proceed with the burn. Okay, here we go. RCS fuel in here, well, pretty much at the bottom, So, but we had enough. You can see that just on battery we have five days left, so even if we didn't have solar panels on the payload, we'd be alright. So since I'm already pushing the limit on relights on the RL-10, I'll do the fine adjustments with, uh, with the payload's engines in RCS instead of trying to use the this stage's RCS, which only has a little bit of MH and N204 left. Okay, well, I'll take that for now. Okay, so let's separate this off. Cross your fingers. Everything is okay. RCS push us. Oh, uh, unlock the tank. Yes, unlock the tank. Now RCS push us forward. Ignite this one's engines. Forget if I action group the solar panels. Let's just extend them like this. Now I said that I had five days left, but that's according to this, which is not correct. Uh, that this does not include the capsules 
electric charge consumption. Okay, well anyway, that's our carrot. And now let's adjust our orbit. I think I'm gonna aim for 70. Last time was obviously, I mean, may have been a little bit low, but uh, also we didn't have descent mode. If this skips out of the atmosphere, I'm not too worried. We have food, water, and oxygen for a go around, and uh, hopefully our, we've got a full batch of a blade of shielding. All right, well, that's as close as, well, no, it's increasing again. Happens when you leave the RCS on. Okay, RCS off before it goes up anymore. Okay, so there we go, and yeah, the, unfortunately the the supplies are down here, so we have to air brake quite a lot before we we uh, we dump this. I mean, not not before we dump this, but before we go around. Okay. Well, we could use the fuel to slow us down. We've got 1,100 meters per second, so we could use that to bring us in, slow us down before re-entry. That's a plan. Okay, let's get to interplanetary space and then continue. Uh, we have experiments on here that we might not have done. Let me see. Nope, we've done that. Thermometer? Probably. Nope, actually we haven't done this one over Midlands. Okay, electric charge seems fine. We will transmit that. Don't have much else by way of experiments. Okay, and it looks like we have the right periapsis, so thereabouts. I'll accept that. Okay, Mattford. Let's hope for the best here. There's Earth. We've got some ambient light from ambient light adjustment. By the way, the reason I'm, I'm not using PlanetShine very much, and that's because PlanetShine doesn't keep the setting when I go out of this view or restart the game. Ambient light adjustment retains the setting, and that's just easier for me a lot of the time. Since I'm picking up where I left off, and usually the lighting's about the same. And frankly, I don't notice the planet shine aspect of it. I mean, it's supposed to have this planet shine light intensity and make it look better. I just and I've got the real I've got the real solar system config in. I've got that. Uh, I swapped the default one out, and um, I just don't notice. <laughs> I don't notice the effect. So, I don't know. Maybe it's because ambient light adjustment is here. Maybe that's conflicting with it or something. But I don't notice the effect when I'm just using Planet Shine either. So, yeah. But maybe it's just me and my bad eyes. Okay, let me orient to retrograde now. So, yeah. Realism Overhaul for 1.0 has come out. I've already created four different installs of it to test things out. Um... My main problem right now is that clouds don't work, and until clouds work, I'm not going to be using it. And of course, RP0 hasn't been updated yet, so that's another thing. Once RP0 is updated and we get clouds, then I can uh, try to start a career with Kerbal construction time also involved, as well as test flight. But I'll be continuing this at least until then and probably past that. Possibly what I'll do is I'll be live streaming that and then editing the live streams for YouTube. But I'll have to think about that because right now there are actually some of the big KSP live streamers who have decided to pick up on Real Solar System and Realism Overhaul, uh, Shimmy the JJ and, uh, and Coffee. So if they're going to be doing Realism Overhaul on Twitch, uh, maybe I'll have to reconsider live streaming it. But I'll think about it because I know you guys want to... You guys love to comment on uh, on things, and I think uh, providing live commentary will be much more satisfying than telling me about things I should be doing after the fact. And it's working quite well with the stock stuff right now that I'm doing on Twitch. So, so yeah, thinking about that. Now, if I'm going to use the engine power to drop my orbit, this is the time to do it. But I'm going to have to keep an eye on my periapsis.
Gotta retract those solar panels. Okay, let me make sure that our upper tank is fully fueled. Ah, it isn't. I mean, fully fueled with food and such. I hope we can transfer that. Um, yeah, we can. Resource transfer is a thing. But Matford won't have too much to go with here. Okay, and by the same token, we need to pump the rest of the stuff out, uh, the waste out. Okay, that's all good. And seems like he's got the electric charge. Doesn't look like we'll have much time to use these. Should have started earlier. Okay, we're in the atmosphere. I need to ditch the... Um, okay, I'm going to ditch the service module for realism, basically. Okay. Here we go. I guess toggle the scent mode. Uh, unlock the HTP. Don't use too much of it, man. Oh, here, here. Stop it. Oh, shoot, it's deviating. Uh, ballistically, it should just turn to the right place. I don't know what it's doing. I, I don't have any uh, reaction wheel on it, so it's just going to be doing whatever it does. Okay, it looks like it's tilting up the right way sometimes. And the wrong way other times. It's just bouncing around. If I maybe if I turn on RCS and do it right, but it's supposed to be sh shifting the center of mass. Shouldn't be using RCS to hold it properly. And it sure used a lot. And I want to make sure I can use the RCS in order to turn myself around if it turns out that we need to go around. But it doesn't look like it. I think we're going to be coming straight down. Uh, I believe shielding is not being used. Temperature is. Uh, nominal for this altitude. Now uh, it looks like the heating is much more severe in uh, in the new version of everything. Uh, but we'll see about that. We'll see. I was just watching the streams. I haven't actually played, played around with it myself. Mainly my testing with the four installs has been a matter of checking whether how long it takes for it to crash before, uh, because of RAM issues, right? So I'm trimming out parts and doing all that sort of thing. So that's what I've been doing with my installs. I haven't actually been launching much stuff. Well, we're going up again. Orbital period is within our supplies. So if we take a look, we've got two days worth. That's another thing. I wanted the HTP so that I could potentially correct my periapsis on the apoapsis side. But I think we're going to come down anyway. I don't think we're going to go all the way up. We're just hanging around 70 kilometers or so and burning off all of our speed. This is something you can't do in the new version. Uh, the, at this altitude, it hardly has any drag, apparently. So, that leads to a question. Uh, where are we? We are in the Indian Ocean. Well, I believe that's doable. I'm sure there are ships there to rescue Matford. He's going to be coming down pretty sharply, though. Uh, soon, but he's not going. He's not going to be going as fast as he could be. Hopefully, he'll be all right. Seems like maybe capsule uh, the hatch side up is the right way to go. I don't know. Here, let's try it this way. Nope. Wow. Well, it sure corrected the opposite direction quickly there. Once I turned off the RCS. Oh well. 
I'll leave it to its own aerodynamic devices. Maybe if I, uh, let me caps lock it and turn on my RCS. Yeah, that, that'll, uh, get the HTP moving a little bit slower. But I'm afraid that it's actually correcting out the, the descent mode thing. That, uh, SAS might actually be trying to undo the descent mode. Let me try and write this, try and orient properly. Capsule getting past, well, we're getting close to 600 now. Parachute is cool. I'll monitor that uh, temperature right there. 900 degrees Celsius. Really wish the ablator shielding would be melting off a lot quicker. 6 Gs. I think possibly the ablator shielding situation has been fixed for, for the new version. It might melt off a little bit better now. 952 degrees. We should be safe. 6 Gs. Should be 6 Gs and going down now. And peak dot at 954, 955 ish. Okay. Wow, barely any ablative shielding used. Crazy. It's like a decimal place is not in the right place or something. 6 Gs? Uh, what, what's the actual official count? Uh, 5.9 actually. We have ended up pretty close to Australia. Okay, here we are in the midst of the clouds and I'm gonna arm the parachute. I have learned... Oh, well that does it, okay. I have learned that if I actually try and deploy the parachute like uh, through staging, uh, it will prevent me until we're way low. Uh, the parachutes are supposed to deploy at 7 kilometers or so. At least Apollo's uh, initial parachutes did. Um, so I like to have them out by then, but uh, something I think maybe deadly reentry prevents it uh, until like 3 kilometers, which is a little bit dicey. Okay, time for full parachute deployment. Let's see about this. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. And recover. Okay, 128.5 science earned from what we had in the pod and didn't transmit yet. So that's good. Uh, we got back a trivial amount of funds. We were pretty much on the other side of the planet from Cape Canaveral. So, yeah, that's fair enough. And Matt for Kerman gained 7 experience to advance to level 1, one probably on the threshold of level 2 by now. And so that's excellent, and we did not lose Matford. So yeah, uh, let me take a brief break after this success and uh, ponder what we're going to do next. I'll take a look at the mission control, and then I'll come back to you with what I decide to do. Okay, well, it looks like we've got a lot of station stuff, surface outpost stuff, uh, some temperature scans and visual surveys, but fortunately we also have uh, the Explore Gilly and Position a Satellite in a Specific Orbit Around Gilly uh, contract, and this is, of course, Deimos, not really Gilly, so it's in orbit around Mars. And so getting to the specific orbit around Gilly should be fine as long as we can get into any orbit around Gilly. Um, I mean, Deimos. Uh, the problem I've had before, if, uh, for those of you who actually watched my Realism Overhaul in KSP Alpha series, um, when I tried to uh, hit Phobos and Deimos, I really hit Phobos and Deimos. Uh, I forget whether it was Phobos or Deimos. But one of them, I smashed right into it because I couldn't slow down in time. And I was trying to get into orbit, but the encounter with these little moons is really, really small. Uh, you know, you talk about a minute or two, and you've got a lot of speed to dump. So, yeah, that's, that's the trick of it. And, yeah, as long as I can get into orbit, of course, uh, correcting your orbit around one of these moons is very easy. They're very small. So that's a positive. But yeah, I think uh, I think that's what we're going to go for. So let me head into the VAB. Probably we're going to use the Antarixa rocket again. Uh, it's got tons and tons of Delta V. 
and the key is to make sure that we've got a probe that's capable of doing all of this uh, and uh, yep anyway let me uh, take a look and see what I can do in the VAB so here we are in the VAB and tons of Delta V as promised though if we're carrying uh, this Delta V in the third stage to Mars we're gonna lose some of it in transit because of boil off but uh, it's not it might we might lose up to half of it perhaps uh, but anyway uh, so Anthrax rocket is as you've seen it in the previous mission hmm it's not moving the rocket down it's not moving the rocket at all I was uh, pre uh, shift clicked it hmm okay I might have to restart the program soon uh, of course after building something you generally have to in Realism overhaul. Ooh, yeah, I've got some camera bugginess. Uh, okay, um, let's see how long this holds out. Don't worry, I, I've saved it. Uh, here, let me move that off since I've saved it. And we're going to... Nope, oh, 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 okay, we've got it. Alright, so this is the actual payload. And added to the third stage is a battery. And, of course, the third stage, the RL-10 stage, has its own solar panels as well. But these will also extend, I think. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that works out. We might. We probably don't need them, if I recall. I mean, uh, judging from our moon mission, the the solar panels on the base of the third stage were enough to power two of these Agena avionics packages, and that's still what we've got. Now we we don't have the rocket loaded up as much as possible. In fact, uh, this is much lighter than the carrot mission and uh, but here's the lander and altogether you see uh, 1034 meters per second in the lander and 1900 in this uh, stage here uh, we've got a, a heat shield but I don't think it'll be necessary we'll see uh, better to be safe than sorry though and we'll just ditch it if it turns out not to be necessary but as usual one kilonewton thrusters MMHN204 on the payload and uh, yeah, nothing much to say about it. Uh, I've got the uh, big antenna on the lander, and that's because I want to make sure that we can communicate back home directly. And this time we don't have an atmosphere to worry about. We're not carrying parachutes, and uh, the this which will remain in orbit uh, has the Communitron 16s on it to relay to the the satellites already in orbit around Mars, if necessary. But uh, yeah, this will communicate straight back home, and if it's in line of sight with the the camera is just weird right now. Uh, if it's in line of sight with uh, anything that can communicate with uh, Earth, then it can use the Communitron 16s to do that. So we're all we're all set there. It's got its own independent antenna, but uh, if it needs to communicate with something that can relay, then it can do that, and this can help. Uh, there's no point really putting this antenna on that one. Uh, because that one can, can well, we'll uh, it's, a, it's a complicated situation. Anyway, but Goo Container, as requested by the contract, right? Uh, the satellite contract said that we have to have a goo, mystery Goo Container. So, yep. And basically, the this lower stage here is meant to get us into the predetermined orbit that they want. And also to slow down to get to... Deimos, and then the lander will take care of the rest. It uh, probably won't take this much delta. Well, it definitely won't take this much delta V to get into a landing on Deimos, but just in case. Uh, and besides, um, I couldn't really make it too much smaller than this. So yeah, uh, the the lander doesn't have uh, full power. Uh, it will run out of power eventually, but it'll probably be able to do its job before that. Certainly hope so key thing I didn't want the thrust to weight going too low uh, too much lower than 0.2 uh, because again we have that short encounter with Deimos and I need it to slow down quickly enough this is borderline we'll see how it goes fortunately the mission is not very expensive even with the huge Antarix rocket and well within our budget in fact we could launch probably 40 of these missions without breaking our budget Okay, so uh, since there seems to be some glitchiness, let me restart. I will time warp to uh, transfer to Mars, and then we'll get going. Okay, here we go. Nighttime launch again. And I used transfer window planner in order to get the intercept. 
not the intercept, uh, the transfer. And uh, the thing is, uh, it found one with a phase angle of 65.85 degrees. Of course, the normal phase angle, assuming perfectly circular orbits and uh, no inclination, would have been around 45 degrees. But of course, the real orbits of Earth and Mars are not so perfect. And so uh, it turns out that the 65.8 degree transfer is the better one. And so we have all the data here, but I'm a little bit late. I'm uh, 18 hours and 49 minutes late. And that is because I want to line up our inclination properly. Uh, we'll see I'm, I mean, uh, whether that was strictly necessary or not. Uh, well, it generally is for me anyway. So uh, here we go. I'm going to throttle up and SAS on for this phase. Gonna zoom out so that I don't get my ears blasted. And all our tankage seems full because I had the pumps on. So here we go. This is the Deer Heart, another character from the Terry Pratchett series. So named after a doorbell Deer Heart, which is <laughs> quite a name. And uh, yeah, anyway, I won't get into the character. Let's just uh, get on with a Deer Heart on the Antarix rocket headed for Deimos. F1 engine and launch okay we have liftoff and the rocket has cleared the tower Okay, looking good so far. Unfortunately, the clock is wrong, so I don't know exactly what kind of time we are into launch, but we should be approaching one minute here. And the plume is starting to grow. Okay, we are getting into the region of heating. The ozone layer or stratosphere, whatever is going on around here. And so far everything's been nominal. Just in case I forgot to mention it, uh, I have locked the payloads tanks. That's why you're not seeing the full delta V of the vehicle right now. So the monomethyl hydrazine and N204 tanks are currently closed. Okay, well we should be able to just uh, keep it to 30 degrees for a while. The J2 stage, of course, burning for six minutes. So, still a while to orbit. Okay, that is the first stage out. Set. Separation is good. And the J2. Now we do have little uh, thrusters on this stage. I should have locked the lower tank. Ah, there we go. Oh, we have locked the lower tank on the third stage. Okay, so we can turn on RCS to help with stability here so it doesn't roll unnecessarily. And the Antarix rocket continues. Okay, I think I should uh, drop fairings here. Should be alright. I hope it doesn't collide with anything. Okay, that's a good width. And I want to extend the Commutron 16s here to help with communication. And that's on the lander stage, actually. So the entire uh, other stage, the Agena stage, if you will, is shrouded and will probably remain shrouded unless we need the solar panels which will be a little bit complicated because I have to remove these panels one by one. If you remove all of these side panels on the stage it will actually decouple it off. Okay, less than one minute left in the second stage burn here and it looks like I've got the trajectory a little bit better than I have done in previous occasions. We'll see though how the third stage burns. I've also locked the lander stage battery and so uh, I'm sure people will approve of that. I always get comments that I should do that uh, in order to just in case things go wrong with the electric charge 
I don't anticipate it. I think we've got enough solar panels, but just in case, uh, it occurs to me that the solar panels on the base of the third stage were only good enough at this distance from the sun. So, uh, but we do have the solar panels here as well, also solar panels on the on the Gina stage. And in fact, I'll extend these solar panels now. Uh oh. Those are also, okay, well, let me retract those because that doesn't look good. Okay, we'll extend them later. I've got this antenna trained to curb and slash earth, so that's okay. And we are now going to pitch zero as this stage is running out. Okay, that's it. And we'll soon run out of that mop propellant. I guess I'll let that happen. It's not drawing from here, and uh, we've locked all the other sources of MMH and N204. This is, of course, to delay. Uh, I want to get closer to Apoapsis anyway. Okay, that's that. Sep. And RL10 engine is ignited. I guess I'll have to pitch down. I'll unlock this tank's uh, fuels. Yeah. Seems to be using too much, so I'm gonna put caps lock on to make sure that we're on fine controls. Okay, here we go for orbit. It's gonna be a little bit skewed because we're not at Apoapsis right now. Lots and lots of fuel for transfer and any corrections that might need to be made. We do have the little little uh, boosters, the SRBs, mini SRBs for settling the fuel down. What are they called? Well, they're just called inline separation motors. Okay, wow, pretty good. 255, 253, better than I thought it'd be. Uh, again, pitching down and all that. Okay, so we have that going for us. Now I will extend the solar panels. Of course, we're in the dark, as usual. I extend the solar panels in the dark. Note that it is staggered, so that uh, assuming that the tank doesn't completely block the way of those solar panels, uh, well, anyway. Hopefully they'll be effective. We shall see. All right, uh, so we have our payload in orbit, and I think I'll wait until next time to uh, bring the mission further due to transfer and then eventually attempt to land this on Deimos. So uh, we'll hold it for here now with with the dear heart in orbit around Earth, and we'll pick this up in the next episode. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.